Hello, hello. So, I have been wanting to actually start trying to make myself a little series here for my YouTube channel. Um, this is still my experimental phase, and I do not have my PC set up yet to be able to edit things very well, so this is just going to be an improv kind of let's play. Mm. I love coffee, how about you? Anyway, this is Void Terrarium. Good luck pronouncing it the way it's spelled up there, Void Terrarium, I, I don't know. It's kind of fun though. So this came out a few years ago. Uh, it's the end of 2021 as I record this. And you know, I had really enjoyed this game when I first got it, because it seems to be an evolution of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and the entire Mystery Dungeon meta series, which for those of you who don't know is one of the more successful traditional roguelike uh, games. So there's no indication on this in the game or on any of the media I've seen on the web about it being connected at all, but it's completely the engine for Mystery Dungeon and here let's uh let's load. I have to say my problem with Mystery Dungeon is that it got too easy. I know a lot of them were Pokemon, so they were geared towards kids. Oh, got out of the right save. Yeah, so anybody wanting to get into this game, just understand you're likely to save right after you take care of everything at home in your base, but it does an auto-save from when you finish the last level, and you're going to want to load and then reload. It's a little silly. Um, but yeah, you also notice I save a lot of states, I like to keep all my save states. So yeah, uh, some of you might be looking at this wondering if you should get into it, or what the hell this is. Basically you're a little robot, and you're maybe the last functional human service droid, and you find this AI in this underground landfill basically, and uh, you discover the last living human in this is what you end up doing, is try to keep her like a... It's kind of like a Tamagotchi pet. You gotta make sure she is fed and clean up her waste. Um, also, you can kind of build her little house out of the things you make for her. Right now, I, I have a basic setup. I'm waiting till I get more stuff to make something more pretty. There's not much to do in base. That's where you keep the food for her. You gotta make sure you've got at least one thing for her. Wait a minute. Yeah, I know? That's very strange. Uh, that's not a big deal. I can demonstrate this. Alright. I had done this before I saved, but... So you take the thing that's gonna expire first. And... Just feed her. And yes, she will eat this little insect. And make a funny face. But she don't know any better, so... Technically, it's food. Eh, yeah, not her favorite. She likes the berries and stuff more, but... And then you just gotta go sweep up after her. And I guess the game is... There's some kind of, like, mini-game to play with her while you're out. I haven't done it yet. I don't think I've unlocked it. So, I'm not gonna spoil story, really. Right now, I'm... I'm grinding for this contamination lab, contamination source level. Um, Botany Labs is the last one. And uh, there are these permanent buffs you have to unlock by getting materials. So the whole reason you're going into these, these randomly generated dungeons, these are roguelike dungeons, so they have tile sets. You'll see the same rooms over and over again, but uh, in different configurations. So if and everything's turn-based, so if you're thinking of getting into a turn-based game, or you're into turn-based games, but you want it a little more action-y, it's kind of a... it's a compromise between an action RPG and a strict turn-based. See, so oh, those guys make corrosion pools. So, um, yeah, the, the thing that made Pokemon Mystery Dungeon too easy is that you could grind 
pretty easily and get overpowered for any story missions, kind of kind of killing the fun of the story. But in this one, you always start at level 1. In every level you get some stats and you get to pick a passive. And normally you would get 2, but I have something equipped that lets me pick from 3. Let's raise crits. So I have... There's like modes you can be in that will affect what perks you're offered, and I'm using the defense one. Because uh, growing up playing single player RPGs, my favorite thing were magic sword users and straight up like black mage type glass cannon mages. Um, recently in games, especially because of online multiplayer, and partly because I just didn't hurt a lot when I was younger. Uh, for some context, I'm 40 and I've been. I, I played Final Fantasy 1 when it came out in uh, the US, so that was 90. And I had Dragon Warrior before that. And I was always um, reading these. Um, there were really good Dungeons and Dragons fiction books, but I never really got to get into a, a Dungeons and Dragons game. So I ended up a single player, like a lot of people. These days it's easier. I still have not gotten to a really satisfying campaign one that lasted more than a few months. But, uh, the appeal of single-player RPGs is, you know, you're always ready to play when you want to play. You don't have to get a group together. You don't have to match with people online. And that's cool. But, uh, I am into more multiplayer these days, and I actually really got into FPS RPGs. I was never a shooter person, but now that there's, like, basically mashups with this genre... I'm really into that, so it gives me the, it gives me action with the ability to create builds and min max characters and stuff like that. So these uh, first levels will tend to have really weak enemies that are pretty much just fodder to get you up a few levels, so you'll be able to handle what comes next. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that. Biogels, if you're planning on playing this, Biogels are kind of the crappiest item in some ways. You get a little HP and a little energy, but it makes you some kind of status effect. So, okay, now I'm confused. Glitch is confused. I'll just walk in random directions so it runs out. Although, actually, fun tip, hold down O and press X, or uh, you might be playing this on another system. It's hold cancel and press action, and you'll just tur pass the turn without doing anything. Alright, that's the exit and the items. And if you look at that radar on the right, when I'm traveling, I'm mostly looking at this. I don't tune into the main area with the actual animated characters until it's time to do a fight. Because you'll get the information for battle you need, but... See, there's an item and there's the exit. You just... Once they're on your map, you can find them. Alright, equipment is very good. So click that. That's really good for this dungeon, because most of the enemies are plants and other organics. So that that's a good edge, especially when you're running a tank, you want a little extra attack spices it up. Now interestingly enough, you might think looking at this, the point is to get as deep as you can and get to the highest level you can, but your main goal is actually these things down here, the resources versus res. So I think that's that's organic, uh inorganic, electrical, I think like technological and contamination. Those are your resource elements for building things for the girl to try to make her life easier and such. So these what these items all do something, but the point is when you're done at the end of the level, you're going to want to have the right numbers here because those are the resources you're getting. I think it's 10 makes one unit, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm really out for organics and specifically inorganics to build the things I need to. Uh, you're always kind of after contamination, because it's hard to get. Like, there's ways to even contaminate items on purpose. But I will talk about that when it comes up. Now, if you're planning on trying this kind of... Oh, time to leave. You don't want to hang out in the level longer than it takes to get the items, in my opinion. Because you can grind, but um, these games tend to have some end state where after a certain number of moves, you just got auto yeeted out of the level. I'm not sure what it is in this game. In fact, I've never let them thing catch me in these games because I don't like losing. There's a lot of investment to start one of these runs. 
slap. Try to keep the action moving. Yes, this is my first time I'm doing anything Let's Play style, so... Nice. If I seem to not be keeping it moving fast enough, uh, feedback in the comment. Tell me if you think I pause too much. There we go. Now see the, the star rating there tells you its quality and rarity. So usually you want the higher star, star stuff. That's a strong auto heal. That means as long as I can survive a battle and have some time to walk, I'll get life back fast. Now I just set off that purple on the map as a trap. Those are usually not too big of a problem, but they definitely will mess with you. Uh, I think the enemies can trigger them, but it's hard to get them to do that. Um, and I think there's certain conditions where you can turn them to your advantage. Yeah, see that extra at plus 10 versus organics? I shouldn't be able to one-hit those guys otherwise. Because, uh, status. Level 3. And I'm not sure what the plus on the left means, like, is that the bonus I gain from levels, but your total stats on the right. And you see I'm a little more tanky than I am offensive, but... Oh, yeah, and these are the perma buffs you get by... ...building stuff for the girl. Item max is very important because you are trying to get items, the point is to get items. Yep. Get to come with some skills. Bullseye is an auto kill, basically. It won't miss and it's really strong. I actually have it equipped specifically just because there's these cockroaches you're looking for. And if you're playing this the first time, you might not be able to get them because they move like three or four moves for your one. And they don't attack, they just kind of run around and when they notice you, they will run away. But they tend to not take a straight line, which kind of allows you to catch up with them some. But the trick is to just kind of convince it to step next to you and then use Bullseye. And they, uh, they give you so much experience that you will tend to level at least once. And if you can find a contaminated one, the purple ones, kill that, you go up like three or four levels. It's kind of ridiculous. So my build's kind of just to get extra choice for stats, uh, perks, and to kill these special enemies that are just there to level up. Deacon Hams are somewhat useful. Uh, there's this weird thing where items get crappier when they get contaminated, but then if they get super contaminated, they get unstable, super powerful. So it's that mid-state you don't want. It'll show up as yellow. If it's purple, it's super contaminated, and of course that means you get more contamination as a resource. But you tend to sacrifice other things. Alright, at this point, looking at the map from what I know of these games, I don't think there's a room over there. You want to avoid anything like uh, just randomly wandering. If you have no reason to be in the, on the, the layer, you get out of the layer. Another thing you may notice that I'm moving one spot at a time, and if you've never played this, you might think that's just how you move in this game, but no, you can walk in a straight line pretty fast. See? Uh, I trained myself into that when I played Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, because especially in the hallways, you will not always be quite ready for the enemy. Uh, the, the, you know, the situations where they move into your space or... You know, if you step into their space, they're going to hit you first. So by doing this, like, stutter walk, which I've gotten quite good at, it helps avoid you getting anything in your drop on you. And increases the chance for a first strike. Oh, there it is. Slam! And yep, instant level up. Mmm, slash, huh? I haven't used this one much. I'm going to try it. So yeah, you can have four of these moves. Triangle. Oh, two levels. Extra batteries. Let's take that. And let's talk about that. So this uh, yellow bar on the top right, that's my energy. If it gets to zero, I stop auto-healing and start doing the reverse. Basically, without energy, the bot can still function, but it starts dying. 
And that energy is also the points for my special moves. Although Bullseye doesn't cost any. The trade-off with Bullseye is you only get it once per level. And in general, if you've been grinding correctly, which basically mostly just involves uncovering all the rooms and killing everything that you want to, that's, that's generally going to give you enough experience to be able to advance further. There we go. Battery. Leaky battery. Not the best. I'm going to pop it now because it gives you a satisfaction. so you don't want to get around enemies if you can help it. So what am I? Sleeping? Yep. Okay. Lost some turns. Not a big deal. Something could have found me, but there was nothing nearby. So yeah, if you're going to use an item that's going to give you a random status effect or something, try to just be far away from combat. Because you're kind of just asking to get slammed otherwise. Alright. Looks pretty clear. Uh, I figure for a let's play... I'm gonna make the goal to level as high as I can and go as far as I can. I'm not gonna really pay attention to what resources I'm leaving with. Because in a normal run, I just fill my inventory, and then I swap out the things I don't want for things I do want, and when I have a good collection, I just commit suicide. Unfortunately, there's no voluntarily leave the level command, which is annoying because when I build a tank... Pardon me. When I build a tank, I kinda get indestructible. Uh, one of the reasons I kind of got off turn-based game genres is because I'm too good at it. Like, this is a very fun game, but it won't hold my attention that long because... Uh, I mean, if you watch, the chance of me losing from not choosing to get defeated... Yeah, see, I gave that guy free hits, but I didn't care because it's not really a threat. There's always some kind of enemy in each dungeon that is really just fodder. Of course, if you find the purple version, it will be fodder. Uh, not much to choose from. Uh, I'm gonna go tank. Now, I cannot comment whether HP up versus defense up is better. I mean... I think the HP gives you a little bit more tankiness, but the thing is, when your HP is gone, it's no longer defending. Defense will work no matter what your HP is, so... You know, um, I'm sure I could look it up. There's some really wonderful, nerdy mathematicians, mathematicians that get off on the numbers of these games. And I, I am one of them, but I like to figure it out through play. I'm old school. You know, we didn't have the internet back then. I had to do all my own calculations to figure out what was uh, meta in a game. I'm banking defense is better for my style. Uh, also because I do enjoy... Well, see, that's the thing is, like, I do enjoy sacrificing HP sometimes for good moves or certain techniques. And then, you know, it's a trade-off. More HP means more fuel, but more defense means that your HP pool is not going to drop from combat as fast. Now this current build, only level 6, nothing too interesting so far. I just want to review, because, you know, every time you do this you have a new build, so it's not like you're going to memorize it too well. Uh, those stats over there, they could be better. It doesn't record crit. Crit and evade will actually be under your health on the main HUD. You can see right now it says crit damage plus 20. Um, I believe that they are naturally 15% and grow from there. And it looks like crit gives you plus 5%. Uh, no, if it only gives you plus 2. Something about game balancing, right? Now that's probably my main... Yeah, and believe it or not, that's, that's very critical because at points you can start to run out of energy pretty quickly. So yeah, nothing too interesting. This is remaining a basic build, and it isn't really even focused on being tanky too much. Oh, there's a cockroach. See, the trick is to... Yeah, he, he, it ran. But it changes direction. It might just suddenly... There's another thing about the stutter walk. When you're chasing a cockroach, it will just suddenly be next to you. And if you make one more step, it sure as hell won't be because it leaves. It tends to ricochet. It doesn't like to hold still. Yeah, see, it took way the hell off, but... It could show up at any time. Another fun tip about hunting the cockroaches, do not 
fucking chase them. It's like, if they happen to run into you, kill them. But, in general, trying to, like, search the whole level just to find this one cockroach, you can run out of energy pretty quickly. And those guys get two moves, so it's a little tricky to avoid getting hit, but again, they aren't a threat. And the fact that they chase you so fast just makes it easier to add your XP pool. Alright, yep, yeah, there's not enough room for any more chambers on this layer. You'll notice I don't bother to complete the map. There's really no benefit other than pleasing your OCD. So if you have OCD, which, you know, this is the kind of game that OCD people would want to play, honestly. You gotta kind of fight it. Like, that map is now gone. It's not saved anywhere, there's no record of how much percent you uncovered, so... If you're a completionist type, strangely, not completing the map is better, because you're gonna get further, you're gonna get better items to choose from. And depending on your goal... Well, alright. Let's see a random warp. Now these uh, potions, I'm glad one showed up. These pretty much make you invincible for a whole level, a whole layer. I tend to start activating them on layer 7, because that's when actual enemies show up that could defeat somebody that is decent at playing a turn-based game. Because you see, there really hasn't been any problem. Oh, perfect! Damn. I gotta remember to use my other move too. Ooh, suicide is good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, yeah. That will basically defeat any enemy at the cost of a little HP. Ooh, Killmonger. Oh, wow, what a setup. Alright, so that's good all around, but Killmonger... You activate tank mode after one kill, so if you're in a room full of enemies... You just go super tank. Oh, that is static? Shock? Yeah, it's shock. So yeah, it's, it's just like Pokemon. Sometimes it works, sometimes your move will work, sometimes you can't. Um, interestingly, that enemy paralyzes both you and itself when you do that move. So it kind of doesn't help the, that particular enemy in the 1v1, but if there's a group, it can be a real problem. I mean, you can see how in a normal turn-based game, you could have one of your characters lock up another character. I know that's a, that is a spell in Saga Frontier, a game I very much want to cover. Now, uh, yeah, see this guy? These guys can kill you, for sure. They get stronger, too. Spawn Swapper, I forget what that does. Oh, full on items, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, see, these are items straight the heck out of Mystery Dungeon. But again, if you are a Mystery Dungeon fan, but you always thought it was too easy, because that was me, I was like, this is fun, but there's no challenge other than trying to get everything. Uh, this actually has some challenge. I mean, if you're not up for a big challenge, you don't have to go deep in the levels. Uh, I don't know how it is on other systems, but on PlayStation's trophy system, there are trophies for surviving up to the 30th layer. Maybe deeper, because there's some hidden trophies. Personally, I like chasing achievements like that, because in a lot of ways this game is a little too easy to challenge me, but it's just so stimulating, you know? I love having to do a fresh build every time. That I, I was disappointed when I first saw that, but then I realized how it keeps, it keeps you from breaking the game too hard. And that's the real problem with turn-based RPGs, if you want me to be honest. Um, I don't want to deter anyone from the genre, but if you've been playing for basically 30 years like me, and you're a natural math nerd, you're just gonna keep breaking them. I got halfway, maybe halfway through Persona 5, which was great. I love the game. I could rave about it forever. Beautiful art piece. You know what I mean? I know anybody who's seen that probably thinks that it looks chill. Oh, he stole my item. But the problem was I broke the system. 
I figured out how to get unlimited money. Uh, my characters were probably 10 to 20 levels above what they should have been for the chapter, and you know, the top. Yeah, it was on the hardest mode too. That's why I moved into other genres. All right, let's just use slash and see how it works. Slam. I think that had a yeah. Oh, you dash through. Okay. Take back my battery. That's a healing field that leaves behind, which I don't need. Oh, okay. These items, which you'll need for the story, uh, they're special materials to build certain things for the girl, and once you've built them, you don't need these. I'm just gonna straight up drop it. Which, yes, takes a turn. Anything you do in your menu takes a turn. So remember that. It's good to do your subscreen manipulations outside of combat. Alright, slam. Unfortunately, this has not been the most interesting run. Crit. There we go. See, so yeah, I have Killmonger, so... Uh, I just want to test Suicide. I haven't used it in a long time. Boom! Yeah, see, for 30% of my HP, I just slammed. Oh my crap, I've never got that. What? Oh, wow! So, yeah, that's incredible. Look at that up there. Wow. Extra damage, damage resist, and crit. No evade, though. I didn't notice that. Uh, stats, the base stats aren't looking too strong, but it's because most of my power is in passives that you don't really see. Okay, so, yeah. This is the problem when you want to go deep, is you run out of inventory space, which, of course, caps off how much resource you can go back with. What I'm hoping to get when I level is one of the passives that gives me more, in more inventory slots. I had it. I had four pages last run, which means I came back with a lot of resource. All right, so yeah, gotta kill these guys fast for the late eggs. Gels are pretty much for using, they're not worth much. Nope. Serpent Strawberry. Okay, that's for the girl to eat. I'm gonna go back with at least one piece of food, but she only had two in the fridge. Um, not this good. You usually want to keep your energy probably over 50. I gotta say it's not that big of a deal though, because it's pretty rare you're gonna run out during battle, unless you're a heavy technique user. Now see, I'm gonna use Slash because I'm pretty sure it's an auto strike and this guy likes to dodge and then run off with your item. There we go. And of course, my build means that the more items I'm carrying, the stronger I get. Interesting. No damage or just drop. Oh, because Killmonger's off. Okay. Shock Bomb. Bombs are important. They can also be used to catch the cockroach, which really is a big thing. I think it's in every dungeon. Oh. I meant to use that. It's okay. I can have it for later. So Alright, let's see. Do I need to decontaminate anything? No. Alright, we're gonna look at this. Armor gives me resist, weapons give me damage, accessories give me crits. Batteries restore HP every turn, and tools increase critical damage. Oh, crit rate versus critical damage, okay. Well, that's good to know. Uh, really? I guess, yeah, you could design your build this way, that's pretty interesting. Just like, I know I want this bomb, what do I ditch? So I think this is... That must be tool. It doesn't say. Uh, no way to tell. We're gonna swap a decontamination kit. So I just don't see myself using them. But yeah, I know what... Oh, absorb trap. Take some energy. I just don't see myself wanting the decontamination kits.
I mean, to be honest, I'm probably just gonna keep grabbing what's useful. Straight up grenade, huh? Okay, that's an escape, that's a decontamination. I'll keep one decontam kit. Mm, these are our choices. Swap. Now, when I start running into tougher enemies and with the cockroach, you'll see why I wanted all the grenades, and also why I've been hoarding them, because there are really only two reasons to use them. One, an enemy is getting away, and you have a clear line of sight, and two, you want to cause a status effect, or in the case of grenades or super corrupted grenade, uh, bomb items. You'll do 60 damage or even more. I think a corrupted grenade does like 180. So that's basically just like a delete any enemy item. And I believe they go about 10 spaces? Okay, no reason to be over here. Oh shit, okay, so I, I didn't notice him fast enough. What, what, okay. R1, face down. Wait, is it? Yeah, hold square to face down, okay. Like sure, see, it's like I do it naturally, but then when I'm thinking about it, it's harder. I can shock him, but that's not enough. Glitch, no. Sleep. There you go. There, he's asleep. And I kept both eyes. It looks really weird. Like, follow on side, I guess? Both eyes. That's okay. I think they can dodge while they're sleeping. Could you not? Okay, Lance looks cool, but... Definitely defense. Plus, I have three moves. I'm gonna not take any other moves unless something really incredible shows up. Because otherwise you start having to swap them out. And then basically, kind of wasted a level. Oh, look who it is. So yeah. You gotta think ahead. This is a little like chess. So he could randomly go... Maybe, I think it's three spaces? Let's, let's look. So move to the middle, because if I move to the middle down, to take a diagonal right down, there's a very strong chance he'll end up next to me, or pushed back into the corner. One, two, three. I think that was three spaces. It's hard to tell. So yeah, see, I'm, I'm keeping it... Yeah, see? By being in the right position, I only had to move a couple times, and... Being able to think like that is unbelievably useful in real life in all kinds of situations. But I mean, it's most easily applied to games that are on a grid, of course, but it, you know, it applies to non-grid things, too. Like, let's say you're playing an FPS, and you're positioning yourself to surprise someone who you think is going to come out of uh, some kind of cover. And there maybe there's three entrances, and you're not sure which one they're going to pick, so you position yourself to have line of sight for all three, and further you try to position yourself next to your own cover or escape route. Similar, similar. Uh, breaking it down to a grid makes it real basic, you know? The way you learn math in school, because the way you use math in life is maybe looser? You know? I don't know. I don't want to go too deep into that, so yeah, explode resist. Not my favorite, but it's three star. And, um, I've actually found a lot of these stranger perks to be more useful in some ways. There we go. Dominate in the field. Oh, okay, sure. Perfect time. Pop the guard potion. So, I am basically indestructible now for the whole level. Uh, you know, those potions also give you 10 energy. You gotta keep an eye on that. Oh, I got glitched, huh? food out of the slop pile. <laughs> <clears throat> so what am I gonna, I'm gonna guess like old food waste started growing underground. It's not like it gets too deep into the lore here, but it's fun to imagine, right? Sometimes sci-fi that doesn't tell you everything is more fun because you can kind of come up with your own theories or hypothesi. Uh, for the record, I didn't say it earlier, but anti-giant armor is great for this particular map. Because there are so many large enemies. Alright, so now I have an extra kind of weapon. 
I love that they call it Killer Saw. Strange I have gotten basically no... No contaminated things at all. Oh, you know what? I really don't need two of these. It doesn't say how long you're going to last at the same contamination level. So for food, when you're bringing it back, you want as little contamination as possible. Actually, totally realize what I should do here. Decondam a strawberry. I'm not certain, but I think it makes it last longer in storage. So... Because if you bring her poison food, she'll get sick. And I actually think there's trophies for making her sick. I just haven't wanted to mess with that yet. They made trophies on PSN for a number of activities that you wouldn't instigate otherwise. Which I might think is kind of reaching a little bit unnecessary, but... I don't know, it adds more activities. I enjoy those little activities, like side quests, I'm a side quest person. I love an open world with, like, 20 times more side quests than there is main story. And I love it when you can just do whatever you want. But it's really hard with the games that have a growth experience, you know? To not break the game. I actually have to be careful when playing Final Fantasy type games to observe the difficulty level of the main quest, right? Because a game could have a really good story, like imagine Final Fantasy VIII, but you broke it so bad that you get to the final level and you're just like one-hitting the mini-bosses and, you know, they're throwing the, the, the queen and the knight at you and it's nothing. But that, that was really, that's the problem with uh, a lot of Squaresoft games, is from six on there were options to break it. And it really started to show in 7 with the whole Knights of the Round summon, which is only necessary for the optional bosses, but I feel like they should have capped it or something. Maybe not cap your level, but like you can't fight the tougher stuff until you clear Sephiroth or the, you know, the final story boss and then have an end game. But they hadn't gotten that far with that. It was Final Fantasy 7 and 6 were the first games I knew of that had post and boss challenges. Just an open world. Anyway, Grandma's gonna stop ranting, and we're gonna take experience, especially if you're going for a long run. Now, of course, you you want that to be like your level one perk, but you're lucky if it shows up at all. So that obviously doesn't pay off at first. You kind of have a slight loss of power in that it doesn't pay off right away. But, it, like I said, if you're grinding right, you should be able to deal with it. And within a few levels, you'll be thankful that you took experience up. There's a reason it's 3-star, there are stronger ones. And uh, there's also a trophy, for those of uh, those caring about that, for... Um... Crap, there's so many, I'm, I'm trying to think what I was saying. I'm thinking about 20 things at once. Let's see, there's levels. Oh, it'll come to me. Battery. I'll see it. Okay, I'm full. Slam, slam. You'll notice I don't need my special moves very often. But, after another layer or two... Oh, we're still on 7. Yeah, it won't start to get really tough until like maybe 10. So for those of you who are good at turn-based RPGs and you're looking for a ch battle challenge... I don't know what the bottom layer is. It's probably 99. I'm gonna guess. But it starts to get hard. So yeah, if you press there's the focus button... Oh, and I just noticed that it... Yeah, see when I'm facing the organic... And it, it's a giant organic, so my resist and damage ones go way up. Otherwise, I would need techniques for these guys. Okay, get pinchered. Not a big deal. Sweet tough again. And XP up already paid off. Overheat! Oh! Gotta take it. It's the improved version of suicide. And it leaves behind a healing field. So, 
obviously superior to suicide. That, oh, slightly contaminated. See, it does 10 HP up instead of 20. Can use it. Fell asleep. Woke up. How was that? Uh, I don't need food. I'm just not gonna care. Yeah, you'll find more food than you need pretty fast. Toolkit, huh? After it, yum. Believe it or not, I. Oh, there's an item bearing monster that's getting away. Yeah, I rarely use the heals in this. Cause if you do it right, you just don't need to. Probably more for an attack build, right? Shock glitch. Nah, this is kind of the crappiest one. We're gonna use that. Glitch should be enough to keep it from getting too far. Where'd it go? Oh, it did get away. See, okay, it's stunned. Uh, screw it. Another glitch bomb. Finish it off, there we go. And it drops a mod. See, so yeah, there's armor, weapons, and mod. Let's see. There we go, vampire. A lot of mods have downsides. Don't need that, but I'll take it. Oh wow, 21 for a crit. Yeah, see, I'm not gonna need healing items anymore. Yeah, you don't need that. I've already gotten all those collectibles for this zone. Slam. Slam! What the hell? My crit chance is 55%. Well, damn yo. Oh, hi. Slam! Yeah, you see that move basically generally is oh more vampire it's a one-hit kill and I can't miss I'm gonna guess there's some uh, tougher monsters deep down that it won't take out but again I'm gonna keep it for the cockroaches and the slamming the cockroaches is pretty essential if you want to go further than just a resource gathering run As you can see, with my knowledge of these games, the way I'm doing this, it's unlikely I'm going to lose unless I choose to, or we'll see how deep I get. This could end up being a really long run. I'm starting to get a good feeling about this build. It's very, it's very basic, but it does a little of this and that. I get extra batteries, I get extra HP, I'm hard to kill. That alone. I just need to increase my inventory size because, of course, with the item master perk, which I'm using for the first time. Oh, that was a thing I couldn't remember. Using perks for the first time. It might be. It was five. I think it might have been 500. Believe it or not, there could be 500 of it or more available, which means I'll have to use different builds to ultimately get that trophy. But I got the 100 trophy one, the 100 perk trophy. Oh, here we go, real enemies. Should have used this already, but I'll pop it. No techniques, that's what silence says. Slam. Silence is a sleeper. There we go, inventory. It's a sleeper status. You are gonna think it's not really a problem at first. Until you run into a big group of tough enemies and you can't use your techs. Techs often save you from battles you're gonna lose. And some enemies will not allow you to run because they'll vacuum you towards them. Most likely an issue in groups. I have not really found an enemy so far in this game that can 1v1 your character. Except that uh, big organic plant I've been fighting. And that's only if it catches you off guard at a low level. But I got just the right equipment for them, and they're the real possible threat in this zone. How about that music, huh? This is actually one of my least favorite songs. Oh, time to slash. Take back my item I don't really need. <laughs> 
Those crits are satisfying, I'll tell you that. See, I'm kind of doing a little bit of every build with this item master thing. But yeah, prime stat to increase inventory size. Oh, perfect, you can't get away. It dodges a lot. Yeah, those guys don't fight back, they just kind of wander around and drop stuff. Yeah, see, that's see the trade-off there. That's not really worth it. But they just added to my stats. Whoa, crit chance is 100 just because I'm holding it. Wow, that's kind of a... Wow, okay, so I always crit now? I have actually never done this before. Ooh, reflect. So you got vacuum there. Basic strike. Definitely taking the reflect. So now, if I'm unable to connect my always crits, they're gonna get harmed just by attacking me. Ooh, there we go. This could be a challenge. Should I suicide? Yeah, check this out. So we're gonna take out this one, would be most tactical. Overheat. Oh, I forgot it hits everything. Okay, yep, now I'm a healing cloud. <laughs> Definitely, I'm glad I took that move. Huh. I haven't raised my evasion yet. That seems to be the hardest one to get. Uh, I don't even think that any particular builds focuses on it. Normally, you only get 2%, but this one... That's not what I- Oh, man, I fucked that up. Well, I just demonstrated how to fucking ruin your level. I just got nothing but the stats for the level. Oops. Hopefully that won't slow me down too bad. Damn, that- 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 that sucks. Um, I do have a cushion of being way OP, but... Uh, just made it a little more challenging. Thing is, you do still get the stats no matter what. get increased stats no matter what. Man, I could have used that evade. Oh well. Okay, is this clear? I'm not finding a lot of the potions that buff your stats. They kind of carry you through. Alright. Oh, yeah. Alright, well despite screwing up, my build is still going to be maniacal. I mean, really? What the hell? It's funny that I would, uh, get the best build I've ever had while recording a Let's Play. But, uh, you know, I gotta say that people just coming into this genre and never having played even a Mystery Dungeon, or maybe you're just considering turn-based games, you're not gonna make it look as easy as I am right now. Although, I'm sure you fixed some things up watching. Oh! Locate things on the map. Oh, perfect. Kaboom. Oh no! I took s I Oh, wait a minute. I accidentally replaced my useless move with something useful. So that- yeah, it's a knockback move. That's cool. Alright, so I didn't waste the level, but... Oh, yes I did. I destroyed my fucking best move. Oops! Oops! Ah, uh, that's a major mistake. Oh, wow. Oh, well. That sucks hard. There is no way to fix it either. But as you can see, I kind of don't need it. I just really like that it created a healing cloud. Uh, you may have seen that it also heals your enemies. But generally, they've been knocked down to almost dead at that point, so it doesn't really help them. That's a shame, that would have carried me far. Power potion. That's an attack up buff. Okay, this guy's getting away. Glitch. There we go. Oh, it actually attacks? I think it only attacks when it's confused.
Okay, corrosion counters, which are basically poison. You know, you lose some HP every turn. Another one of those, cool. And uh, I'm not gonna complain about it too much, but damn, that that really filled out my build. Because uh, healing techniques are not fine. So believe it or not, that's the main feature for me of that skill, is the fact that it drops a healing cloud. I have not yet encountered anything resembling a boss fight, but that would be perfect. Of course, you don't want to drop it on the boss. I would replace suicide, not the other one. But that's the thing too about if you get a little upset, slightly obsessed with a loss, It is a chance to think about what you did wrong, and what you would do next time. So next time I accidentally pick the wrong perk and it's a skill, I'm going to be very careful about my placement. Yeah, grab that. I can't imagine why I would want to decontaminate anything. Okay. As you can see, you get plenty of those. That one's corrupted, so that means... Oof, they're gonna put up a fight. Oh, okay. That's not how that works. Alright, knock back. So basically, yeah, you knock them back and you don't get hit. There's another move that knocks, makes you bounce back one. Ah, oh, ooh, ooh, oh my god, this is, okay. Wow, hard choice, right? Here's the thing, overheat will pop up again. Escape would be good for if you want tank to hell. No, take the experience because that means more levels. I totally want to take the move back there. I appear to be getting mad good RNG. Okay. Let's see. Uh, sleep bomb? Yeah. That's what you want here. There we go. So, if you're watching this to learn how to play it, I'm kind of teaching you how to break it. Huh, that's a tough one. Yeah, my crit rate's max, so I don't want to... I guess it is a... Okay, more vampire. It's kind of redundant at this point. Okay, that is an item block person. The little box on wheels. If these enemies have names, they sure don't tell you in the game. Okay, my last grenade. 60 damage should take it out. Bomb! Drop an item. Ooh. Oh, not corrupted. This guy's just purple. Oh, triggered a landmine, but it hit this guy. That worked out for me. It's funny the landmine stays there. You'd think that would, you know, eliminate it. Shelf? The heck? Well, that's new. I didn't know you could get blueprints out here. Alright, so I guess I'm keeping that. Maybe you can only get it if you go deep enough. I've, I've been past layer 11 though, I've never seen that. Ah, oh, jeez. I just have so many items. Oh, did I? I already used it, huh? Okay, this one's worth dropping something for. Again, I keep just not wanting this. Oh, hold on a minute. I am almost out of energy. See, it does happen. Um, one of the reasons my energy hasn't gotten to the point where I actually had to use a battery is because I keep using items. There's a lot of items that just give you 10 energy in addition to whatever else they do actually very important for energy management. Leaky battery, I see it. I've noticed they usually glitch you. It says random, but it seems like it almost always does glitch. And glitch is kind of annoying. Because it's not just your character doing random stuff in a game where there's movement. 
It makes you just wander around all over the place. Yeah, we are just experience fodder at this point. Gravity, huh? Ah, a massive vampire move. You know, I gotta say... We'll take it from now. So unfortunately, because of that whole thing where I, uh... Accidentally deleted the move that I really wanted to keep... My math is a little sloppier than I like on my build. But of course, you know, you can see... Even with a mistake that bad... It really hasn't slowed me down. I imagine gravity would combine well with some other moves. get that damage resist up. You know, at this point, it's just a game of me, like, looking at numbers. Oh, there we go. Come back here. Okay. Pitch bomb! Pitch bombs are good for these guys. I like to save the more severe status effects for the cockroach. Another osmosis. We're using one. Yeah, it seems like the enemies are leveling. Ooh, wow. Guess you don't even... You can't even auto-map when you're flying back like that. So, it seems like they're getting a little smarter, too. They're tending to use their techniques. Which I think they can use all they want, really. So, maybe that's how this gets harder. Okay. Auto strike, hopefully. That slash move was perfect for this. Oop. Got the cooldown there. Uh, I'm gonna risk missing him. Got him. Oh, here we go. I'm in a spot. Well, let's see. Uh, gravity would be good because I can hit him all at once. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I don't need to use any more techs. Okay, so... I, I tend to try to destroy the high attack of this one to cause static effects first. Whoa! See, I don't want to swap out my moves too much because the earlier levels get kind of cancelled out. No, I've never used that. And I like to add it, but no. Nah. I don't want that right now. Shock Strike. As if my attacks weren't powerful enough, now they can cause shock. Which means that if my techniques get turned off by silence, I'm still able to cause status effects. That's pretty tight. You'll notice shock does not stop you from free walking. It only activates when you try to perform an attack, I think. I don't know if it interrupts or using an item or something like that, but Alright, so let's see this. Pick this up. And if you notice that when I'm doing that, it also actually causes the enemies to get a free turn. Used. It's so annoying. Don't want it. Uh, don't want it. So yeah, for longer runs, you really need to try to keep the right items. Huh. Ah, I guess. Super Vampire. Basically, as long as I can attack, I can't die. And yeah, as you can see, by exploiting experience up and just being thorough about grinding, my level is twice the number of...